Emily, your fat phobia is showing. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sam. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you guys here again with me for the shenanigans this week. If you are new here and this is the first time you are seeing my face, welcome. I make weekly videos dissecting internet nonsense, so if you're into that type of thing or you like today's video, I hope that you'll consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and make sure that you never miss another upload from me. As I was preparing for this week's video, I realized that it's going to be my 100th video on the channel. And if I had put some forethought into that, I would have combined last week's little spiel and this week's spiel um, about the 100th video and getting closer and closer to 20,000 subscribers. Um, again, it just feels so unreal to have been here with you all now for a hundred videos. I am so thankful that you all chose to subscribe and you keep coming back. It honestly just feels so unreal. All right, that is enough of that. Let's get right into our video today because if you didn't see just this last week, actress Emily Blunt broke the body positivity and fat liberation internet scene when an old clip resurfaced where she was calling her waitress enormous. Hello everyone. It is very late on a Sunday and I'm realizing that whoever owns the rights to this um, original interview is not going to let me use it to make my point. Um, the internet is a wonderful place. Copyright sucks. So you're going to get to hear me kind of voice over. I'm not going to pretend to be Emily Blunt. So you'll just have to roll with me here. Um, also, on the original TikTok, there are at least subtitles, so you'll be able to read it as well. Here we go. So we went out to dinner at this Chili's. The girl who was served me was enormous, you know? I think she got freebie meals at Chili's. Nothing wrong with that. So she came over and she said, Did anyone ever tell you you look a lot like Emily Blunt? And I said, Yes, I have heard that. And she went, Are you Emily Blunt? I went, Yeah. And she went, What are y'all doing here? And then she was like, are y'all shooting a movie here? And I said, yeah, I'm shooting a film called Looper. And she went, Looper? And I went, yeah. And she went, y'all just made that up. And I was like, I really didn't. This clip was posted on TikTok by an account called Holly Weird. And once the clip started to take off and kind of catch that viral uh, steamrolled people's For You pages, they really just couldn't help themselves. People were coming out in droves to stitch this thing and tell Emily Blunt just how horrible she was. You know here on this channel, we really like to talk about internet logic, um, the internet binary that exists, and as I was watching this thing unfold these last few days, I was just fascinated because this is a case study of people seeing a clip and being very reactive without putting a lot of thought behind it. And right away, people were making a lot of assumptions. Let's take a look at some of these stitches and some of these assumptions and talk through this thing together. Here's one video that I would love to share because it makes a couple of assumptions that are definitely worth us talking about. I just want to say I love how the guy that she was interviewing was like nothing wrong with that because it ain't nothing wrong with that like and that is and, and the crazy part is that had nothing to do with her telling the story at all like it was not an important part of her telling the story to be like that girl was enormous and then she had free meals at Chili like that it was irrelevant and y'all sitting here y'all be defending the most heinous mucking people with the evidence against them like thank god y'all are not lawyers all right this video stuck out to me at the minute that i saw it because She's not the first person that I saw claiming that the host was trying to stop Emily and sort of give her a way out with his comment, like, nothing wrong with that, when she said that the Chili's waitress was getting freebie meals, right? They're kind of putting him on a pedestal um, and making it seem like he is like, whoa, Emily, like, you're not supposed to say that. There's nothing wrong with them getting free meals. And even outside of TikTok, I actually saw this morning on Reddit, people were talking about it and... People were again praising this host, like saying that he was somehow trying to lead her away from this line of reasoning she was about to go down. She was actively making these choices on her own and he knew that she was wrong and was trying to stop her. This is kind of the um, assumption or impression that people are taking from this one snippet. And just like in this TikTok, there were so many people 
where the main reason that they were angry is that it was rude for Emily to mention the waitress's weight by calling her enormous because it had nothing to do with the rest of the story. And again, that was interesting to me because I understand exactly what they're saying in that she did not have to identify the waitress that way for her story to make sense. When you see it cut down in this clip, it makes perfect sense. Why would she bring that up? It's It doesn't make any sense. It's completely out of context of the story. Then there were a few TikTokers who just went completely off the rails, like straight up Emily Blunt conspiracy theories. Take a look at this woman's clip here. Also, I will say that like, I think the way that these like TV shows work is that they, you give some stories to your publicist of like publicist of things that have happened to you recently. And then like the, sh the show and your publicist like decide like what you're going to kind of talk about. And that was probably a story that worked well because it was fat phobic and also promoted her movie Looper, which like guys, I mean, you guys are going to write in and be like, Looper is the greatest movie I've ever seen. I don't know what Looper is. Now, this is just one snippet of her longer video. Um, she gets into quite the rabbit hole. But I found it particularly interesting that she is so heated. And then she makes this comment that clearly this was so thought out beforehand. She had given her publicist these stories. And then together, right, this thin, beautiful actress and her probably thin producer decided that this fat phobic story would be the perfect thing because fat phobia sells. She had the most bizarre take that I saw of all of the things as I started getting into this. But what none of these people seem to realize is they're reacting to an edited clip from a longer interview. So you all know me, I had questions and I needed to know where did this clip come from and what did the entirety of this interview actually look like? Oh, in this clip, you hear Emily start her story and she's saying, so like, for example, we were filming in this really remote town called Thibodeau. So we went out for dinner at Chili's. I think it was the only restaurant around. She's interrupted by the host saying Chili's is great. Have you ever been to Chili's? He asks the audience. Then he continues to say, man, if you go to Chili's, you'll see why so many of our American friends are enormous. He said, I went there once and ordered a starter with four mini burgers and they were the size of proper burgers. And Emily just laughs in response before going into her story. So there are two very important things that I want to talk about now that we've seen this clip sort of more in its full context. The first is the assumption that somehow this host was trying to back Emily away from these fat phobic comments. He made that quip like nothing wrong with that because he realized that it was inappropriate for her to be making fun of fat people, right? He's a savior. He is a saint. What actually happened is that he was the first to mention it, saying, if you've gone to a Chili's, you can see why so many of our American friends are enormous. And the truth is, these are two British people. And if you've watched British TV shows like this, it is not unusual for them to poke fat at a poke fat, poke fun at Americans. They are constantly quipping about how everything in America is so large from our people to our houses to our RVs. It's not at all atypical. But he was the person who started this whole conversation and he was the first person to describe Americans as enormous. And then you can see because Emily had been interrupted in her train of thought that she is just trying to quip back into this conversation. You're right, when I was in America, I went to Chili's, my waitress was enormous, as you're saying. And then she continues into her story. Now, don't get me wrong, this doesn't make either of them look great, and I'm not defending Emily, but when you see it in context, her bringing up that the waitress was enormous is her tying back to his conversation after she had been interrupted mid-stream of thought because he had just previously asked her a different question to which she started telling a story that he interrupted. So this is her attempt to connect back and also move into answering his original question, which is the second thing that I want to talk about. There were a lot of people claiming that Emily was being classist and making fun of poor Southern people 
And that when she was talking about this waitress and the way that this waitress spoke, that she was mocking Southern accents. She got to serve Emily Blunt. How cool. And then got to see an interview where Emily Blunt called her enormous and mocked her Southern accent. Not this poor waitress for her body her accent, what you assumed was a lack of intelligence. And you did it because she was a Southern American. What we can see from this full length interview is that he had actually asked her what it was like for her to go through um, dialect coaching to learn a Southern American accent. The host is asking if this is how she perfected her accent being married to an American. And Emily explains that she worked with a dialect coach to learn a Kansas accent for the film. When he asks, what does that mean? She explains that it's a combination between a Midwest and a Southern American accent. And somewhere in her answering the question, she got interrupted. So to me, this read like, okay, well, he asked me about the Southern American accent. Here's an opportunity for me to show that I did learn how to do that accent with this dialect coach in her responses. I did not at all think that she was mocking this person um, that she was telling the story about, but a lot of people were very angry at her for mocking Southern accents. And I think the craziest, best thing about witnessing this whole thing unfold the way that I did is that it's the perfect proof positive of how literally people saw a clip not an ounce of critical thinking skills were used and it was easy and profitable for them to just click record and make a very angry reactive video to a clip that was edited to look a very specific way. Any one of these TikTokers could have Googled this whole interview the same exact way I did and they could have watched it, but they didn't. They chose to make these clips to put a lot of peer pressure on Emily Blonde to apologize and to shout into the void, look, fat phobia is real. At the time of filming this video, I have yet to see someone make this point that there is a full length interview. I've only seen people talking about the fact that it's 12 years old. Rather than give Emily Blunt an iota of the benefit of the doubt in this situation, so many people were just so quick to jump in and just talk about how horrible she was, going as far as name calling. Ugh, so we got a fat phobic celebrity biatch alert. So you're more like your character from Devil Wears Prada than Mary Poppins Jim from The Office. Blink if you need our help. I love that. I didn't know that the character that you played on Devil Wears Prada wasn't actually a character, but it was based on you because in real life you are a bit. I particularly like this clip that I'm about to show you because it proves that this person did no research before coming online to talk about this. Enormous girl here. Uh, Emily, not okay. Truly not. And you know what? If she's getting free food at Chili's, good for her because the cost of living for us little folks right now is sky freaking high, especially in the U.S. And any bonus you can get and help you can get with that, good for her. She is talking about how it's great that this waitress is getting freebie meals from Chili's because today inflation is so high that we littles can't afford groceries or food for ourselves. So like, get it girl. Not a clue in the world that this thing is 12 plus years old. I also thoroughly enjoyed people's confusion about Emily being classist with her comment. And her comments and her attitude and the way she said it, it was just very clearly disdainful. As if actress Emily Blunt, English, posh English lady, deigned to lower herself to go to an American chain restaurant. And Emily Blunt, you were supposed to be one of the good ones. You're just doing that. You're being a colonizer. You're being aristocratic. And it's just so disappointing and disheartening, honestly. What did you expect? Like, 
she is a celebrity, first of all, and she, in 2020, was one of the highest paid celebrities, right? So she is way out of the realm of reality. She has so much money, she doesn't know what to do with it. But she also comes from wealth. Her dad is a lawyer for the highest courts, and her mom was an actress. She has zero understanding of what it would be like to struggle, to need free meals from your workplace to survive, because the amount of money your workplace is paying you isn't enough to cover your bills. Why are people so surprised that celebrities are out of touch with reality when it comes to day-to-day -day life for average middle class and working class people? It never ceases to amaze me <laughs> that people are surprised by this. Why anyone is surprised is honestly beyond me. I don't know why people continue to put so much faith into celebrities. They will always let us down. And this leads me to what I think is perhaps the most entertaining part of this whole thing. And that is the amount of stitches where TikTokers were saying how badly they felt for this waitress, how meeting Emily Blunt was probably the highlight of this waitress's whole life, and that it must have been fantastic for her to get to meet Emily Blunt because how often are celebrities in the American South, especially Louisiana? By the way, Looper was filmed in Louisiana, so it was probably this waitress's best moment of her life. The reason this is so entertaining to me is that no one knows this waitress and none of these people who are personifying these feelings onto this human being know what this interaction was truly like. Think about it. We are only hearing Emily's side of the story. At the time of filming this, no waitress has come forward to say how horrible this made her feel. Of course, Emily's going to make it look like it was a great interaction and, and she was so excited, you know, the girl was so excited to meet her. Like, it's much less interesting if a celebrity was like, yeah, I went to Chili's and no one really paid any attention to me. Do you see what I'm saying here? Emily is going to make it look like this person was so interested, was so excited. She's showing off that she learned this accent with a dialect coach. It can't be boring, otherwise what's the point of the story? And she's not going to make herself look bad. And I think what's the most interesting is that so many of these TikTokers felt so comfortable putting themselves in this waitress's shoes saying, oh, she must have been so excited. She ran home and told her friends and family, like, guess what, guys? I got to serve Emily Blunt today. What if she went home and said, oh my God, she's kicking off her shoes. And she's like, guess who came to the restaurant today? Emily Blunt. And as you'd imagine, she's just as smug and rude as you would expect her to be. Like that could have fully been what happened. Literally no one knows. We're basing this whole interaction off of one person's story. And it's, again, a celebrity who's not going to make herself look bad. Honestly, it just made me laugh every single time I saw them doing this. Because no one actually knows what happened. And then there's the f kind of what I was saying earlier. A lot of these people who are saying how this waitress must have felt were mad at Emily for dunking on Southern people, right? Playing into these stereotypes with mocking the accent. Um, a lot of them had things to say about Emily, thinking that Southern people are not educated. <laughs> and while they're doing that and trying to defend Southerners, they end up dunking on Southerners by saying that Seeing Emily Blunt in the Chili's made this woman's life, right? She's got nothing else going on as a poor Southerner. Meeting Emily Blunt was the highlight of her entire life. I don't know about you guys, but it seems counterintuitive to me <laughs> to try to defend Southerners while simultaneously dunking on Southern stereotypes. And the best part is that they don't even realize that that's what they're doing. Emily has already come out and apologized as well. She was very quick um, on the apology. And people are still really salty about it, saying that she's distancing herself, she didn't take full accountability. Let's look at her apology. In this article, we can see she said that her jaw was on the floor when she heard the clip 
and that she was appalled that she would say something so insensitive, hurtful, and unrelated to the story she was telling. She went on to say, I've always considered myself someone who wouldn't dream of upsetting anyone. So whatever possessed me to say anything like this in that moment is unrecognizable to me or anything I stand for. And yet it happened and I said it and I'm so sorry for any hurt caused. I was absolutely old enough to know better. Kudos to Emily's PR team because she used a lot of these talking points from these stitches talking about how she was old enough to know better, uh, that she caused hurt, she would never say these things, it had nothing to do with the story. These are all things that people are angry about and she's using their words back at them. Still not good enough, they're not happy with it, so I'll be waiting to see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Did you see this all playing out with Emily being fat phobic? What did you think of that original clip and if you hadn't seen it already, what do you think about seeing it almost in the full context of that interview? The interview itself is about nine minutes long. Um, I'll try to link it down below if you're curious and want to watch it. But what do you think now that you've seen both? Do you think Emily Blunt is fat phobic? Do you think this waitress will ever come out and talk? Do you think Jonathan Ross is the savior that everyone's making him out to be? I'm curious to know, so please leave your opinions in the comment section below. And for my introverts who don't want to leave their opinions in a comment section, I see you, I feel you, go ahead and leave me some sort of like chili or like pepper emoji in the comments. I love seeing those just as much as I love reading people's opinions, so please leave those for me as well. Thank you all so, so much for being here with me again this week for this hundredth video. I will see you in the next one. Bye!